Well, that sucks. Broke my tool. God, I hate this engine bay so much. <laughs> Welcome back to a new video. So I'm gonna try to keep the talking to a minimum in this video because we've got a lot of stuff to do on the engine bay of the Corolla. I've taken quite a bit of a break and it's time to really knock this thing out. So a lot of the stuff that I've been doing again is just tedious stuff I've already gone over in other videos. It just takes a lot of time. So uh, real quick before I move on, I wanna show you all what I have done so far on the engine bay and where we kinda of stand and what the next steps are gonna be. So if any of you all are attempting to do the same thing at home, you can kinda of follow along with me. Uh, fair warning, I don't suggest it, but uh, it'll be really cool when it's done. So uh, let me show you all where we're at. Whew. All right, guys, where to start? If you all saw my previous video where I did an update on the garage and shut off all my two-wheeled projects, you'll kind of know where I stopped on this particular project. I had everything kind of coated just uh, in this self-etching primer. Again, this is all going to be sanded off before we paint the engine bay because I'm going to use some actual 2K epoxy and all that kind of stuff. I just needed to keep rust from forming. Battling the humidity is not fun, especially with steel, so I did my best to go ahead and just kind of cover everything in self-etching primer. Now, what you all did not see and what I've kind of done off camera is I have seam welded this corner, seam welded that corner, seam welded that corner, and also seam welded that corner over there. Those four spots were the absolute worst in this whole project. It is so hard to get a Dremel up in there or something to sand those welds down. That's why they look like crap, but you know what? At this point, it's definitely tacked in place. It's definitely stronger than it was, and I don't think the fiberglass filler that we're gonna use in that corner is gonna crack because I do have some pretty good, not all of them are great, but I do have some pretty good welds and they are penetrated into the metal. And just to show you all how many of these freaking Dremel things I went through, here's just some of them. Uh, I've got some more kind of just hanging out on the ground around here. You can see all the metal shavings. Oh my God, that's all the weld that's been sanded off and everything. Whew. What a freaking job, dude, I swear. If y'all are thinking about doing this, man, more power to you. This is the one and only bay I'm gonna shave. There's just so much work, man. 
I, I really didn't anticipate how much work this was going to take. And, uh, man, burnout is real when you get stuck on a project and stuck on stuff that you're just not all that interested in doing or, or just get kind of burnt out on it. It's going to look great when it's done, but, man, we got to get there, and the journey is, is real. <laughs> Now, something I am pretty actually proud about, uh, you didn't see this in the last update, but I went ahead and shaved the radiator support uh, piece right here. So there used to be some holes down along here that I have patched up and welded, and uh, all the remaining holes are holes that I need. So this is gonna be for a radiator. These two right here are for the head light. That's the bracket of the head light. It kind of fits in there. And then this is your hood prop that kind of spaces the hood up off the fender. Same thing over here. Everything's nice and smooth. I went ahead and left this divot because this is multiple sheets of metal and I think kind of, I don't know if it's a structural part, but that's kind of keeping everything together. So I went ahead and just kept this. I think it's fine. It's gonna look good uh, with everything flat and just these two little dips. I don't think they're gonna be that big of a deal. Uh, they match on both sides, but I'm pretty proud of that. I mean, I will say my metal fabrication and like welding up holes has gotten so much better during this project so that is definitely one takeaway from this that I'm glad I I did is my welding is definitely improving for sure and to show you all what I mean here are all the little pieces uh, I actually went ahead and uh, patch welded these holes up but then I decided I wanted to cut out the whole divot these are all divoted on the radiator support so I went ahead and cut all of these out I cut out little cardboard templates and uh, out of like paper stock and stuff just a piece of cardboard here and they match all of these sorts of pieces that I cut out so like I think this piece is like this one you know what I mean here's a long skinny one it's probably that one this guy you, you get what I mean so I just took some time kind of traced these out and then transferred them to some cardstock transferred this to a piece of steel that I had laying here, cut them out. Then I just took some time putting them in place and tack welding them nice and smooth. And we'll take a little bit of body filler and go over this whole thing to smooth everything out. But overall, the final result of this actually turned out pretty cool. All right guys, so the next thing we're gonna do on this project is we're gonna go around all the welded areas inside the engine bay and we're going to apply some uh, short strand fiberglass reinforced filler. Now the reason we're doing this is because each one of the welds there or the welded areas, they definitely have little pinholes. If you try to weld up every single pinhole that you find, you're gonna burn through so much of the metal, it's just not even gonna be worth it. So all those little pinholes need to be filled up with a little bit of fiberglass filler and that'll be our initial filler that kind of makes everything as flat as possible. Then we'll sand all that stuff down, get it all nice and smooth, and then we will coat the whole thing in epoxy primer. And then after we have it all in epoxy primer, that's when we're gonna get going into the regular body work where I use some lightweight filler and then uh, finalize and finish up everything. Basically what I'm trying to get at is we still have a lot of work to do on this engine bay. So I need to go ahead and stop talking, hop on the bay, and hopefully by the end of this video, we'll go ahead and have everything coated in epoxy primer. All right guys, let's go ahead and get started.
right, guys. So I lied. <laughs> I actually forgot that I bought this uh, because the this stuff here, it's a little bit different. But this is long strand and it's a little bit old. So um, I think it would be better to just use some kind of newer stuff. I actually forgot that I had that. Uh, but this is basically the same thing. I mean, it's a uh, it's a short strand fiberglass reinforced body filler. So uh, it says now with Kevlar for superior strand superior strength in thinner applications high strength high build waterproof body filler ideal for body seams welds door edges and high stress repair areas so this stuff uh calls well actually it wants to be applied onto bare metal so i went ahead and i've prepped a little bit of the engine bay you all probably saw that in the past sequences or whatnot and uh, I'm gonna basically mix up some of this, and then I'm gonna first, my first round of this, I wanna make sure that I get it in those corners. So I'm gonna use my finger and really push it down into the corners. That should hopefully build our base, so then we can start sanding with body filler a little bit easier in those areas. So let's go ahead and mix up some of this stuff and see how it works. I also bought this mixing board too, so essentially what you do for this is you just kinda peel off sheets um, so hopefully it'll be a little bit better than having to mix on some cardboard like I have been doing in the past. Very nice, very nice. Cool. All right. Let's mix it up. Hey guys, welcome back. So I haven't really been videotaping any sort of progress on it because it's pretty much the same thing. I'm applying body filler and sanding. And here is where we are currently. So as you can see, very rough, uh, but we do have filler in place, uh, especially up on all of the seams. So right now this is really kind of dirty looking, but I've got, uh, this is the fiberglass reinforced filler. Uh, got it all down that seam all down that seam, all down that seam, and all down that seam. And then also I used this sort of filler to build up any sort of material that I needed. So this is a little bit thicker. Now when I say that, it, it's not very thick, but uh, I needed to build up a little bit of a layer here. So then the, uh, the Rage Gold or the lightweight body filler will be a little bit easier to apply onto those particular spots. We won't build that up a lot because this stuff is meant for that. It's meant for building up. It's meant for waterproofing. It's meant for a, a strong adhesion and strong filler. So that's pretty much what I'm using right now. Again, this is that short strand kitty hair, the fiberglass reinforced filler by Evercoat. Uh, and really all we've been doing is just a whole bunch of sanding. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get back on it.
Whew. All right, well, I think that's gonna be a wrap for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I know we didn't quite get to the epoxy primer part of this project, but we're gonna dive right into that next video. I did get a lot of sanding done, as you can tell there. I mean, I would say that looks pretty good for the first round of sanding. Now again, we've only used the fiberglass reinforced filler. We have not moved on to the lightweight filler yet, just because I wanted to go ahead and get the fiberglass filler kind of set down, a nice base, build up where I need to, and then we'll come in next video and use that lightweight filler to get everything all nice and smooth. Also, we'll get it in epoxy primer. I know I said I was wanting to get to that in this video, but I think this is a good stopping point. I mean, look at how smooth this is over by the frame rails. And then the transition right here, like from metal uh, kind of to this front wheel well, I mean, I think it's turning out really good. And also the radiator support is actually turning out really cool as well. It's nice and smooth. I do need to do a little bit more body work right around this area and kind of hammer this stuff smooth. But other than that, guys, it's looking pretty good. I know it has been quite some time since I have posted anything on the Corolla, and for that, guys, I, I am sorry. You know, it does kind of boil down to just lack of motivation uh, and just these weird times, man. Priorities have kind of shifted for me, and I just haven't had enough time to come out here and work on the Corolla as much as I would like. Um, but I would be lying if I didn't say that lack of motivation is a really big reason why I haven't been out here. But I'm motivated now, thanks to you all. Thanks for leaving all of those comments, reminding me it's been X amount of weeks since I posted and uh, asking about the A86 and when the next update video is gonna be. That kind of stuff keeps me motivated. Uh, gets me out here in the garage working on the car and that's what we need to do. We've got the rest of winter to get everything finalized, sanded, prepped and ready for paint. Hopefully we can get this thing in paint the beginning of spring 2021. Once again, thank you all for tuning in. I hope you all enjoyed this video. And until next time, I'll see you later.